Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope this video finds you well. I just thought I'd pop by and create a video just for fun. To be honest, you know, I don't know whether you have them, you know when you sometimes have a day and you're feeling a little bit, you know, bleh. You just don't feel like doing anything and you can't concentrate on anything and whatever you turn your hand to doesn't go quite right. I'm having one of them days, so I thought, you know, I'm just going to create for the sake of creating, for no other reason. So I'm simply going to create with stuff that's on my desk. And as you can see, my desk is still wet. Handy, but there you go. But I'm just going to create with what's on my desk. I've done a couple of backgrounds already because I was testing to see if what's on my desk will work. So I've got my distress pencils and they're woodless pencils and because they're woodless that gives me other advantages i don't think i want the red the let's have pink yellow and uh blue so these are woodless pencils and because they're woodless it gives us uh, other ways to use them which is brilliant so i'm using mustard seed salvaged patina and picked raspberry now if you don't have the pencils then go and use your distress oxide inks or your distress inks and just create you know a watery background you know by mopping up the inks of the the, the ink colors from your non-stick craft sheet let's just play because we want to play and that's the only reason why and really everything that i want is sort of surrounded by me on the desk somewhere so what i'm going to do so I'm just going to grab a piece of kitchen roll. Let's move these out of the way. And I've got a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card and it's four and a half inches by six and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is give that a good soaking with my spritzer. And then I'm just going to take a normal sharpener, nothing special just a pencil sharpener and I'm just going to sharpen my distress pencils and I'm just going to use the actual shavings just to create the background and the reason you've got a touch of pink on there is because I've done a background before just to check if it would work so I'm just going to sprinkle the pink on there so we started with the mustard seed then we went on to the picked raspberry and then we're going to go on to the salvage patina and the reason I had to do one before is because you don't want to wait until the majority of it dries because you'd be very frustrated with me because nothing would be happening so what I'm going to do then, as you can see, even though I've got moisture on there, some of it starts to move, but let's give it another spritz. Now you need card that can take this moisture, that can take this amount of water. So you really need card that can take that. Now what I did was, I just adore how it swirls together. It's just wonderful. And what I tended to do is I sort of mopped the bottom. And what I was aware of, that you have to be slightly careful, you know, on what colours you're mixing, because you don't want to end up with a muddy mess. So you don't want to mix like purple and oranges or something. And sometimes, sometimes if you mix yellow with some things, you can, it can look a bit muddy. So you just need to be careful of that. So what I did was I let that dry the majority of it and let me show you what it looks like this is what it looks this is still a bit wet but when it's mainly dry however you will notice that the color is more um it's deeper and it's richer on this because what i did was i allowed this to dry naturally then i spritzed it spritzed it again and did exactly the same thing i sharpened the same colors and went over again with the sharpenings from the crayons and added them so that it gave me more intensity of colour. So what I did was I allowed the kitchen roll just to mop up the excess 
and then I just place it on a flat workspace just so that it dries so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm just going to place this on some clean kitchen roll on a flat surface so I'm just turning over to the other side of my desk just to place this so this is what I got when I allowed it to dry on its own the card is still wet because I've soaked that so it's going to need to dry with the heat tool this one dried a little bit longer and it's got a touch of purple in there but that dried a little bit longer very textural because it's got that gritty texture on there so what we can also do let me just we've got that background on one side let's do another one because this video isn't about rushing it's about just having a play because Tracy feels like having a play so what I'm going to do is do exactly the same can you tell I'm running out of water let me see if I've got another spritzer do you know nearly every spritzer is out of water but what we're going to do is I'm going to add the same colours again Just add those colours and this is the advantage of a, a woodless pencil because it allows you to use the shavings and I've got a bit of blue in there I'm just emptying my, emptying my sharpener and then I'm going to take the pink just add a little bit of pink and what I like is it's hit and miss you know it's like when you do brushos you don't know what you're going to get and each time it'll look different because you can't predict how many shavings you're putting on there. So it's different every time. So just add that to there. And then what I can do is spritz with more water and just add a little bit more for the intensified colour. And I tend to put it in my hand first because you don't want it to just come off in one place. You, you want to be able to have it coming off in a few places. So you can also, as long as you've not got wet hands, you can just sprinkle it. So it's entirely up to you. You could also add some of the shavings to little containers so that you've got some of the shavings ready. And just empty your containers of the shavings. There we go. What we're going to do then is just clean my hands because they're going to have that. And I'm just going to mop up some of the excess water just around the edge. What I'm going to do then, hopefully I've got another piece of card. Yes, I have, thankfully. What happens if we place our stencil on there? Let's just clean, let's go that way because it's a bit grubby. So if we place our stencil on there, and then place another piece of card over the top. So let's place another piece of card over the top and just mop up some of the ink. So then we just get another background, which it doesn't look much maybe, but it's still a background and it'll still work with a bit of background text. And look at the intensity of colour. It just works really well, the intensity. I mean, look where the yellow has gone on there. Just love that. So that ends up being another background. But then, if we lift the stencil, I don't know whether we'll have... We've got the circles on there, which we'll leave. But I don't think there's much... No, there's not much on here. There's just a tiny bit of pink, which is neither used nor there. But if you ended up with a lot on your stencil, you could turn it over again. So what you've got then is you've got another background. So you've got this background, you've got the background created just with the shavings and the background created with more colours. So you end up with several backgrounds. So place those on one side and you'll probably see those in a card in the future. So let's just give that a wipe. So I'm going to give this a little dry. 
mainly because the card has had a little bit of a battering with water. Oh dear. I couldn't get my heat tool in the plug. So if you don't get a card that's of good quality, so minimum 250 GSM, I'm using 300 GSM because you want it to be able to take the moisture. Because if it can't take the moisture, you know, it's just not going to work. Just turn that over so I'm going backwards to forwards. And you really do need to make sure that you allow it to dry naturally so that it's got that intensity of colour. And you can tell how much moisture I've used because when I'm drying it, the actual moisture is coming through to the non-stick craft sheet. So I do need to make sure that's dry a little bit more. I mean, if you left it overnight, then it would dry solid, you'd keep the richness of colour and it'd work beautifully. So you can just let it dry overnight. What you also need to do is remember to remind that card where it's supposed to be. So just flatten it out a bit. Just give that a little bit of a rub and you can see just the intensity of colour on there. It works beautifully, absolutely beautifully. So I just need to, do I need to, I need to give my hands a wipe, mainly because with adding the, um, what do you call it? The shavings I cannot get this off here why do i always end up with some baby wipes that don't work and then i can just faff on a video and then get my hair off because it's driving me mad there we go come on trace oh baby all right there we go I'm just going to give my hands a little bit of a wipe because as you can see when I added the shaving foams shaving foams the shavings to my hand it will add the colour there but if you allow this to dry naturally you're going to get more intensity of colour this is drying a bit more now and it just looks wonderful let me just move that out the way so it's entirely up to you which backgrounds you use. This one's got a little more, more colour, that one's got a little less. But I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the background stamp that is from my Plant Your Dreams. Stamp set 320. And it's got this lovely sort of text on there. But because it's an A4 stamp, it's a little bit bigger. So it's not as fine as some of my other smaller ones. So it's a little bit bigger, which is perfect because it gives me a little bit of a different look. Right, we need a, a big acrylic block, which I can't grab hold of. There we go. And I think this poor thing needs a little bit of a wipe. It's been well used. Absolutely well used. It's absolutely filthy. Top, top, Tracy. So we're just going to add that there. And what I'm going to do is grab my grey ink pad. So don't forget we had no plan really. We're just doing it just to, just to create. So I'm going to take my grey. Now, don't forget the base, sorry, the grey is morning mist now i need to remember that the card has got that texture on there so it is going to actually let me just have a look at this so i want to go up to garden and scatter so i'm just going to just wipe just these the, the last three words but i need to remember that there's texture on that card because we've got the shavings themselves actually on the card but that sort of adds to the overall 
texture of everything. So what we've got then is we've got, what I like about this background stamp is it's quite open. So it gives a nice open feel. So the, 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 you know, the designs are all different for different reasons. So let's just take, and the good thing is you end up with shavings everywhere. It's hilarious. I end up cleaning shavings up continually. So we're just going to go down the card just to add that text, just going down the card. And the grey, therefore, isn't too overpowering and it doesn't take over from the background. So the background is still prominent and you can see all those colours. You can use different areas of the stamp if you wish, but that doesn't really matter for me. I just want a simple background, nothing more. There we go. And I think that's plenty. So we'll just put that back. So you can use whatever stamps you've got just to have a little play. I'm determined to put the stamps back. Obviously, I've got them the wrong way. There you go. So you can substitute with any stamps that you have. Going to grab a spare piece of card. I've got the stamp here. And I'm going to use the cyclamen because it'll look nice with a touch of pink and also it's quite delicate. It's not too over the top. So the cyclamen is See You Soon and is stamp set 898. There we go. Just take that and then we're going to stamp this with black because we don't want this to get lost within the background. We still want it to stand out. Now I've cut some of these out in preparation so that you're just not waiting for me to cut them out. To be fair, I'd cut them out a while ago. It's not they weren't cut out today. So we're just going to stamp the cyclamen. Just stamp that cyclamen. Again, allowing the ink just to soak into there, just to make sure that it's got good contact with the card and that you get a good impression, which is beautiful, just beautiful. So it works really well. Now I've got these already cut out because there's nothing worse than, than if you're just coming along to do a quick video then to wait for me. And I'd actually got these all cut out beforehand so that I could just play with as much as I wanted. So I can take, I've got little parts of cyclamen and everything here. So what I like is the cyclamen this poor thing one here has been bent, poor thing. So the cyclamen gives a really good focal image, but it isn't too much. It's not too overpowering, so I really like it. But I'm going to keep that one reasonably white. We need our, the one thing I didn't get out was cotton thread. So what we need to do is keep that one reasonably white. And I've got my cotton thread. I was so chuffed I got this tin with them when I ordered it. But it's just some cotton thread and I'm going to use the pink. And then we'll also use a touch of the yellow as well, just to give me a little bit of texture. So we're going to give that a nice open feel. So let's just spread that out just so it's got a lovely open feel. Let's just make sure it's got a nice open feel. And then we'll have some of the yellow as well, just to reiterate that yellow. There 
And again, just unraveling that quite loosely, just so that it's quite loose. There we go. Move that out of the way. And then I can place this onto my project. But I'm leaving this one white. So I'm not going to adhere them all. I'm just going to adhere a couple because I like to keep some areas without adhesive on so they've got movement. So I'm just going to place that down. Let's move this a little bit. That was it. And then that one hasn't got adhesive on, but it means I can move it as much as I want then. Just so you can see what we've got so far. Let's just place that up. And then I'm going to take another cyclamen, if I can untangle them. That's one. Let's move these out of the way. I love the cyclamen because, because of the leaves, I don't know, it gives sort of a full feel but without being overpowering and I really like it. Right, what I'm going to do then is take, let's grab a water brush, but let's grab a, an acrylic block and we can use that as our palette. I'm going to take the acrylic block, just add a bit of water Make sure that my water brush is clean, which those of you that know me know that I'm not particularly good at, at washing out my brushes afterwards, tut tut, which is not very good. And what I'm going to do is add a touch of the picked raspberry just at the bottom here of our little cyclamen flower. Now for me, that's like a washed out colour. So I'm going to pick up that pigment direct from the pencil, which won't, it, which won't affect it because it's woodless. It's, you know, it won't affect it because it's pure pigment all the way going through. Please don't do that with other pencils because it can ruin them. So just pick up that pure pigment. And obviously because I've used this pigment in the background, it'll work quite nicely using it in the foreground. So let's just blend that out. And of course, we've missed one little petal there. I always, always miss that petal. Every time. There we go. And let's just blend that out. And you always, try, if I can, and I'm not creating where you need to see the results, you know, straight away. I do like to allow things to rest. So normally I would go and have a cup of tea or a biscuit and I would then come back and add another layer of the same pigment because it just gives the card time to rest. You don't break down the fibres too much. It's a little bit more gentle on the card but by adding the layers like you would with anything when you add the layers you get a little bit more vibrancy to your card so let's just wipe that up move this out of the way and then we can add our second cyclamen just so that as long as you don't get them tangled up, which I do every time, just so it's sort of there. So we'll just add, and what I'm going to do is add a little bit more of the pin flare, just so I've got a bigger blob just on some areas. So you can see I've not done it, I haven't put any on the leaf, I've not put any on that flower, so it keeps some areas loose. And then just bring that down a little, just so that it works quite nicely. There we go. And 
we'll just give that time to rest but what we'll do is we'll just add our splatters just to with our Posca pen and I tend to hold my Posca pen further down here and also I make sure that the ink is flowing by pumping it on the non-stick craft sheet and once the ink is flowing then I'll add my splatters but not until the ink is flowing. So we'll just leave that on one side. Let's place the cyclamen back. Place this back on our cyclamen stamp. And there's so many images on that cyclamen stamp that you can use alongside your cyclamen. But I do like to sort of mix things up. So then what I'm going to do is just take this stamp which is garden mix tagged and it's got the tags that coordinate with the project so I'm going to take the little cyclamen tag so we'll take the little cyclamen tag and I love the fact that this has got little numbers as well which just work beautifully let's move that out of the way and I will use the big acrylic block, doesn't matter. Now, if you use a large acrylic block and you've got a tiny stamp, say that you've only got those in your stash at the moment because you're saving up or whatever. Put another stamp down here just so that it stops any rocking. So if you place a stamp down the, down the other end of the acrylic block, it'll stop the rock. Just makes it a little bit simpler to stamp with, that's all. If you're going to handle your cutout pieces, just remember to just blot the image with a piece of copy of paper. I'm so used to not touching the image that I'm used to it now, so I'm usually quite strict on myself and don't touch anything. But you should blot if you're prone to having your fingers all over the place, especially with the VersaFine Clair because it stays wetter longer and therefore until it dries, it's more prone to smudging. So I'm then going to take a little bit of this and just add a little bit of the pigment just to my cyclamen just so that it echoes what's on there just so you can see it's got a little bit of pink on there just going to bend that a little bit and then I think I'll pick up a little bit more just to add a little bit more intensity of colour and we'll take our pin flare glue again, or you can use your ultra thick gel medium, whichever you've got to hand. Because don't forget, we haven't thought about this too much. I'm going to and what I like is I can just faff around just to add and I really do faff around, but that's me all over. No, I don't want it. Oh, do you know? There we go. I want it underneath. I do like a little bit of faffing. Let me just show you. Let me just move that. Just so you can see. Just, just got that tag in there. In with that combination of elements. And I'm just, I've got to add a little something else. Of course I have. Um, I always have to add a little bit of, of something else. Which just makes me happy. So what I'm going to do is take my little cute mouse, which I adore using. And we'll use the mouse and which one do I want 
want the one facing that way. Okay. We'll use that one. I'm going to use that black ink. Again, this is a very tiny stamp. So if you find you struggle, just add the other mouse, this end here, and it'll just stop the wobble when you come to stamp. Because sometimes we tend to press on the bottom area of the acrylic block and it can cause a little bit of a, a wobble. So we don't want that. So let's put that back. Don't want to lose my little mouse. And then we just cut that little mouse out. That's one thing I didn't have cut out. I was doing the garden on Sunday, just gone. And I've got to clean the patio because a little bit of work's been done. So those that know me know that I am pot mad and I have got hundreds of pots. I mean, it isn't a patio, it's just a storage area to have all my pots on display, let's be truthful. And I had to move all the pots. How heavy were some of those pots? Good grief. So I'm moving the pots and then after I've been moving the pots for about two hours, Ian took pity on me because Ian had got a bad back and he sent Ryan out, my son, to help me, especially with the huge, huge pots that were left to do. So Ryan comes out with me and joins me and we move this big pot and we've got a trolley that we're trying to sort of manoeuvre them onto as well. And um, all of a sudden, all these mice run out and there was little baby mice and I have to say, I've never seen anything so adorable. They were gorgeous. And I'm not exaggerating. I bet they weren't bigger than that. They were tiny. I mean, I felt terrible for removing the pot and they built a nest there. But in my own defence, I had no choice because they've got to be moved. But oh, I couldn't live with myself for about 24 hours. All I could think about was these poor mice. Oh. But I have to say, they were the cutest things ever. They really were. I was quite surprised how tiny they were. It was minuscule. Let me just... Where do, let's put that there. There we go. So we've got to add the mouse because it reminds me of my gardening on Sunday. So just so you can see, I've kept the cluster here, sort of down this bottom edge, just to keep that cluster. And then what I'm going to do is add that to a black mat. So we'll just grab our adhesive. Now what you have to remember is that this is quite this has been quite wet. Just bear with me. Let me see if I can find. an embellishment and of course I can't. Just trying to find a little embellishment just to to put on my project. I haven't used a little embellishment for ages so we're going to use one of these index clips just to ha add a little pop more detail to my design. Now I need to make sure that I add enough adhesive. Don't scrimp on the adhesive when your card has been bent and has been soaking wet. Make sure that you've got adhesive so that it's going to stick down. So I'm going to stand up just to make sure I've got it in the right place before I actually press down. Just going to allow that. I'm gonna just move that slightly then. There we go, let's move this down a little bit. You've sort of got, with the Nouveau glue, I've probably got a couple of seconds before it really grabs and it grabs quite quickly. So I have to make sure that I get it in the right 
place just so that it looks right so I just always stand up for some reason it just works better for me right I want a Posca pen now I'm just going to grab a Posca pen and of course I go for the gel pens always the wrong pencil case always now I'm going to add some yellow splatters and the reason I'm doing that is that will also if you can get your pot pen going because I've only got a small one there we go just add you're gonna laugh because it's all over my computer but I tell you why because with this it's funny because the smaller Posca pens I find splatter more all over the place but the bigger Posca pens don't for me I quite like the bigger Posca pens just press that down let's just wipe our area and let's just grab a piece of copier paper oh dear come on Tracy why can you never do anything one-handed No, I couldn't do anything one-handed. Right, let's place that there. What I'm going to do is just press a little bit more. Just to make sure that's dry. So then I'm going to add that to a five by seven card blank. So let's add that to a five by seven card blank. I'll lift it up so that you can see it. Now you're not sort of fighting with the card so much because you've got that flat black card. So I don't need to worry quite as much. It is a little bit more difficult when you're working on a piece of copier paper just to see the edges of your card. And I have to say, those yellow splatters just add that little bit of a perfect finishing touch. There we go. And I've created a card just because I felt like it. And I really hope you'll create a card just because you feel like it. But these splatters echo the yellow in the background. The pink echoes the pink in the background just so you can see that dimension. And let's have one more look at the backgrounds now. So this was the one with a little few more colours added. This was the one by putting the stencil on the top. This is the one wiping the excess from the stencil when we placed it down and we just wiped in the circles. And our background that I put to one side this is the background I put to one side. Doesn't it look fab? Absolutely love them. And what we've done is just spent over 30 minutes together and it just lifts the spirits when you create. So I hope you enjoy that and I can't wait to see your interpretation. Love to all. See you all soon. Bye for now.